Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are when you are listening. We're here hustling like crazy, working around the clock. It's important to keep balance in life, so the workload is so great. We do our best to keep it balanced and get some fresh air and nature as well. I just got done with what was by far my most favorite in over 20 years of doing it, teaching experience so far. What made it so is that I shared the stage with Arash Dibazar. And Arash has such a high standard and will walk the talk and is so congruent and so am I on my side, that we created magic together, the dynamic was out of this world, influencing each other positively to raise that standard even higher. We're now working already on editing the footage, which will be a program to be released very shortly. In the meantime, if you are not yet friends on Facebook with Arash Dibazar, or aware of his material, it's an absolute must. I invite all my friends and all my students to go for it because it is absolutely surreal, the level of mastery of the information. This week, the topic is going to be improvisation. Why first would improvisation be so helpful, important, and super potent? Well. Think about it, whether it's in a conversation with someone or in dealing with your life on a daily basis. Most people will do okay or even quite well until something they didn't expect happens. So in my own opinion, humble opinion, I think that the ability to improvise is very highly ranked, if not number one resource to be not only successful in pickup and in life, but also to survive. So you want to train yourself not only to think fast on your feet, to have quick replies for pretty much anything that people can say, but also anything that life can bring you. And here's a little secret, not many people know, you watch my videos and many guys humbly said once again, are going to agree that I think on my feet super fast. But the secret is always simple. Hard motherfucking work. Meaning, in college, in my 20s, my major was music production and stage performance, but my minor was improvisation. I liked it so much that by the time I relocated to Los Angeles, I started to teach at every college of the Greater Los Angeles College District classes on improvisation. Later on, companies like the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf were so impressed by the results some of their employees randomly got from taking my classes on improvisation and public speaking that I was contracted to teach that kind of stuff to their upper management. If corporate America can recognize the value of it, so should you. So, I will give you a series of exercises on improvisation during the next couple days. But here's the first one. Whether it's in terms of the topics that you hear, or your own inner experience, or also what life gives you, the number one rule of improvisation is to step out of the model of good or bad, Girl is talking about how ecstatic she felt after the yoga class. Guy's like, oh my God, what a good topic. Or the girl suddenly goes like, oh man, I'm so exhausted. Guy was ready for a fun night. And that asshole at work. Most guys would think, oh no, that's a bad topic. How do I deal with that? Or let's say you yourself, one day you feel talkative. It's flowing, it's great. You feel like you're in state. But the next day, you cannot put more than two, three words together. <gasps> or no, it's bad. Bullshit. It's all good and it's all about your ability to utilize anything that may happen. So today, randomly, find yourself not knowing what to talk about. If right now I told you, go, tell me a story. Most people would go um, uh, and start to look around to find an idea no, 
looking around like that is what people do with their body when they're confused. So you're better off taking what's exactly in front of you and what's happening within you. So then it's no longer about finding a good topic, it's about taking whatever is there and delivering it better. If really I didn't know what to say or I start to stumble or I run out of things to say, like there's a fucking reservoir and I forgot to stop by to pull more knowing what to say fuel within. Uh, then, like right now, okay, I went uh, uh, it's about how you process it. So I could go uh, uh, like it's a problem or I could go uh, 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 your turn. Or if I don't know what to talk about, I could say, you know what, it's funny. I'm having one of those moments where for whatever reason, I got no clue what to talk about. So accept whatever is there and recognize it as something you can utilize. Here's the secret formula. Number one, whatever is there. Um, I don't know what to say. Number two, deliver that to the best of your ability. Make it richer. If anything, add a few words. Go, you know what? It's too funny. Uh, you're gonna laugh. I'm having a moment right now. My mind is going blank. Step number three, turn it into a topic. Fascinating thing about the idea of the mind going blank. Who picked that expression? Imagine. Thousands of years ago, there was a village and suddenly somebody goes, hey guys, from now on, when we don't know what to say, we want to simply call it going blank. But then after that, how did that become more popular? Because there was no internet back then. Did the guy get on a horse, quickly went to the town next door and say, everybody, oh yeah, oh yeah, got them on the marketplace. Uh, and made an announcement. From now on, it has been decided when we don't know what to say, we're going to say, I'm going blank. Now, after that, you pass it back, step four, to the person you've been talking to, and you go, what about you? When you don't know what to say, what do you do? You try to pretend everything is cool? You start to sweat it on the inside? Or you just simply say, I don't know what to say. And you put the burden on the person, Many people say arms folded means you are closed. Well, in basic body language, in advanced body language, it is also a power position assumed by people in uh, places of authority, you know. So where were you last night? Or tell me more about your work history. There, because it's about being social, you give it a smile. So, uh, speaking of improvisation, guys, there's another surprise. We're gonna give it and give it and give it, but you gotta do your part. I released yesterday, I think I'm going to put it up again for anybody that missed it, a phenomenal free, no charge, podcast with the number one celebrity vocal coach on the planet. I was blessed to study with him years ago. The man's craft is phenomenal. He's at a place where he doesn't need to work anymore, but he loves what he does so much. He's still giving it and we were blessed a couple weeks ago to have him as a guest on my podcast, the legendary Bob Corp. I mean, he only works with celebrities, you name them, anyone who had an accent in Hollywood, whether it be Jackie Chan or Antonio Bandera, he's been helping them, Vince Galvin as well, <laughs> just teasing. Yet, um, he even went as far, it wasn't just a talk, he decided to help you guys right away to do an immediate vocal workout on the podcast. You go to VinceKelvinPodcast.com or you find it on Facebook today. And uh, one thing I've learned, not only it helped me to be more free, express myself more freely, but the more you apply yourself, readjusting your tonality, and most of all, being much more assertive. On Bob Kors CDs, he once said that you will be mesmerize at how much more responsive people will be. And the example he was saying, let's say you call the phone company and they're not extremely helpful at first. If your voice is a little shaky, your volumes are low, they're gonna give you hell. But if you know how to more assertively, clearly speak, whether English is your first language or second language like me, magic will happen. I'll meet you again tomorrow to continue, we're gonna do three, four days. By then, other ideas will come, so I don't wanna drag it too long on 
purely improvisation. Do your exercise today, find yourself unaware of what to say, and follow the steps I gave you, watch the video again, make sure you befriend Arash Dibazar, although he's already so popular, famous, and solid all around the world, you probably already know about him. If you do, you will agree with me, this guy it gets unanimity, like, uh, yeah, the haters don't fucking get it, but it's a, it's a compliment that uh, haters don't get it, but everybody else who's uh, that much smart gets it, that it's fucking amazing. Download the podcast, it's free, with Bob Korf, and uh, tonight we have the Monday call. If you never called live, here it is. It's 712-432-1100, 712-432-1100, then you enter 721-797, and the ash or a pound sign after that. Uh, it's free. And you can ask me any questions live. We have gentlemen that call from Europe. They wake up in the middle of the night to do it. Can do it from Skype. A uh, guy has been calling week after week from India. And again, thank you to all of the people who came to the Inner Mastery one time only. If you missed it, sorry. Uh, thanks to my cousin, Alexander Rose, cousin back there. Hey. He's like super focused with his fresh new tattoo. He's been rocking Hollywood for a couple of days. And most of all, thank you to the sweet hands that are holding this camera. My sweet, darling wife, who, uh, wow, it's got to be quite something to handle Vince Kelvin on a daily basis. And she's always very, very, very supremely supportive. So, the kiss wasn't for you guys, it's for her. Ah, would she? <laughs>